Medical Dilemma Welcome back to Medical Dilemma. Again, we'd like to say thank you to our major sponsors, Makati Medical Center, St. Clair's Medical Center, and LifeQuest Training and Consultancy Corporation. Now, joining me for the second segment of the show are my co-host, Attorney Sara Sugitan. Welcome back to the show. We missed you last week. Yes, yes. thank you. And uh, Father Jerry Manlangit. Yes, okay. Father, we also missed you last week. <laughs> Okay, and of course, uh, Dr. Teresita Sanchez. Okay, hi. <laughs> now, uh, before we took the commercial break, uh, we were talking about the abuse of the use of uh, ultrasound as a diagnostic tool. Uh, Dr. Chua, could you please explain further what do you mean by the abuse of the technology? Well, as I uh, was uh, saying earlier, Clinicians now tend to depend on ultrasound for their di for their management decisions. No, mm -hmm. without even uh, uh, examining the patient, they send the patient to the ultrasound to the ultrasound unit or the ultrasound section, and based on what we see and what we report, then they already make the management decisions. Like if we see a myoma, so mm -hmm. we measure the myoma, the, the 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 tumor in the uterus. And then when the patient goes back to them, mm -hmm. uh, they would say, look, you have a myoma, and we need to do surgery on that. Mm -hmm. Without looking at the patient and seeing whether the patient really needs to have that myoma removed or not. We, we, we remove myomas only when they have pain, when they have abnormal bleeding, mm -hmm. when it's growing at a relatively fast rate. But if it's a small myoma, it's relatively stable, doesn't grow over time, over mm -hmm. six months, like for example, then that myoma does not need to be removed. Mm -hmm. So that's one way that it could be abused. Ah, uh, yes. But you know, uh, most of the time, the ultrasound is really a very accurate uh, procedure, yes. you know? And people tend to rely on the results of this. Yes, so. yes. Kaya nga, uh, but really, I think it's an anathema really forbidden to really request just because for the sake of requesting and not even examining the patient. Exactly. Unless yes. very busy yung doctor, pina nauna doon, o kumisan yung pasyente mismo, inuuna niya yung ultrasound, yes, no? even yes. without the doctor's <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> prescription yeah. pa, di ba? Yeah, uh -huh. and, and, and that's why I say somehow ultrasound has really become run of the mill already, you know, patients mm -hmm. go to the unit, uh, to the ultrasound yeah. room oh, sila uh, na by themselves, sila <laughs> na mismo, gusto ko magpa-ultrasound mm -hmm. kasi masakit ang pusun ko, oh. things like that. Yes. Yes. So yes. they yes. think yes. ultrasound will make, give them the diagnosis. But I have a question, Doctora, well, which should it not be like uh, a normal standard of care to have an ultrasound when it is available in the hospital? What do you think? I'm sure in the provinces sometimes, wala naman sonologist, wala naman ultrasound machine, pero supposing it's available, don't you think it should be an adjunct? Like for example, in appendicitis, most surgeons tend to depend on this finding of the ultrasound to be sure that there is really appendicitis. Yes. Because sometimes, mm -hmm. uh -huh. whether if they operate, na wala palang appendicitis, mali sila. But if they don't operate and the appendix ruptures, and sa maren, Yes, ba? yes. Uh, with the new, the more modern machines now, they're not, they're not the surgeons or the sonologists who do uh, gastrointestinal ultrasound are now able to make a diagnosis of appendicitis based on ultrasound. Yes. But with, for us gynecologists, it is done more to rule out other gynecologic causes for that right lower quadrant pain. Yes. Because it could happen that the pain is not really appendicitis but a ruptured uh, ovarian cyst, or, or it could be a uh, an ectopic, ectopic pregnancy, yeah. a pregnancy outside of the uterus, yes. or it but could be one. yes. <laughs> so if uh, if the the ultrasound we do, the gynecologic ultrasound we do, mm -hmm. rules out those, then for sure it would be appendicitis. Uh -huh. So it's done more for clearance that mm -hmm. there are no other gynecologic uh, problems in that particular patient mm -hmm. coming with right lower quadrant mm -hmm. pain. So, yes, Father. Yes, while we marvel at the fascination that we have with technology, while we acknowledge the fact that technology has given so much uh, as uh, help to all of us who are unable to see what is inside, and as you have mentioned, that there are things that probably doctors must be able to, well, to be guided as far as their ethical obligation on the patients. No? Mm -hmm. Uh, now, with modern times, it looks like that uh, uh, the doctors have already given up what we call the clinical eye. Yes. 
Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Which from the very beginning in their medical studies, that is one of the things that uh, the, uh, professors, instructors would, try, would like to develop among them. Yes. Clinical eye, especially so, Doctor, yeah. if you are assigned in the province yes. and chair yes. where you, you have a lot of technology, yeah. the clinical eye uh, is very, very important. But you see, with the coming of technology, it looks like that uh, it has already substituted the mm -hmm. clinical eye. Yeah. And uh, you know for a fact that in the States, you know that 60% of the procedures mm -hmm. using technology were useless. And it has become useless. very expensive mm -hmm. yeah. for the patients, 60%, mm -hmm. which are unnecessary and could have been done through the Just clinical by, eye. Yes, yes, yes of course. Yes. Because mm -hmm. I have seen this, I have had uh, uh, what you call this uh, a residency as far as my hospital uh, administration is concerned mm -hmm. in the States. Mm -hmm. And we have been told about it. That's why insurance policies have become very expensive because of this. And of course, we cannot fault the doctor for being so, well, uh, careful because, well, the litigation, the, the litigation etc. Mm -hmm. It has become very expensive. I see. But in the case of uh, ultrasound, uh, isn't it's it it's not so, so cheap now? Yeah. It's not really that in fact, expensive. you can actually go into a mall and you will find a diagnostic center that offers ultrasound services, yeah. which is not very, very expensive. So in, in my simplistic thinking, I think it's actually good for, uh, for patients to walk in and ask for an ultrasound, even, even without, without the doctor, advice yeah. of a doctor. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's possible, but again, I would like to see a win-win situation mm. where the patient is first seen by the clinician, right. a good clinical history is made, and a good uh, pre-, pre uh, or working diagnosis is made before requesting for the ultrasound because right. sometimes the ultrasound is not needed. But again, I agree with attorney uh, Dr. <laughs> Tess uh, Sanchez that women, I, I, I do believe that women deserve at least one ultrasound examination every year yeah. because every year. there are some things that we don't feel with our examining fingers like a beginning ovarian cyst which could turn out to be an ovarian cancer later so if you see that cyst that's still small it, it will not always automatically be a reason for surgery but what you can do is you can monitor its growth over every four to six months maybe uh, monitor and see if, whether it's enlarging rapidly or it's uh, steady or it's even regressing in size yeah, and then the clinician could ask for further the, we now have what we call the tumor markers no these are blood exams mm -hmm. which if they're high then that would point more towards a malignancy if, it, if it's low then it's probably just a benign cyst so all of these tumor markers plus the ultrasound monitoring will now work towards the benefit of the patient yes. and uh, it will result in an, an earlier management if mm -hmm. it turns out to be non-benign mm -hmm. I think really the diagnostic uh, procedures like that are really very helpful uh, especially for those the patients who are shying away from doctors. <laughs> they don't want to pay yeah, yeah. the consultation yeah, yeah, fee or anything else. Mm -hmm. And then they see this, so they yeah. decide for themselves, which well, of course is not properly correct, but uh, yeah. it's better than nothing, I guess. Mm -hmm. but, but, but again, uh, something <laughs> also comes up. In the ultrasound room, uh -huh. they say, Doctor, nag-opera din, din ho ba kayo? And so they begin asking us questions because they know right. we are also gynecologists. Okay. So they begin asking questions. So sometimes it's very hard for us to say, I'm sorry, I'm not going to answer that because yes. my yes. role here is only as a gynecologist. It's very, very hard for some sonologists who are also gynecologists mm -hmm. to turn down a patient who will tell her, Doctor, sa iyo na lang ako magpapa. Oh, opera or oh, magpapa, yeah. ano. Yes. So again, the ethical, <laughs> the ethics, ethical, right, moral right, um, right. aspects Kasi, uh, of that. They do have uh, usually that, their uh, own yes, doctors. Yes, yeah. yes. Mamaya sa sabi, oh, inagaw, inagaw right, yung pasyente ko na sonologist na pirate. Pumunta ko dyan sa clinic na yan, nakuha yung pasyente. That's right, that's right. Uh, those things come mm -hmm. up and it becomes messy afterwards. No? Yes, yes. Uh, although every patient has a right to go from one doctor to another. Yes. Mm -hmm. But sometimes there will be an ethical problem when, well, these things would come up. No? Yeah. Si Doktor, kinuha yung uh -huh. pasyente. <laughs> yeah, come up. Yes. And in professional go. conflicts yes. come in. Yes. And sometimes among professionals, it lasts years and years oh, after. Yeah. Oh, yeah. May oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have experienced that in my hospital. Uh, but <laughs> should, shouldn't, shouldn't the choice of a patient uh, on his or her doctor supersede, you know, professional Yes, of course. It's ethics. always the decision of the patient, no? Mm -hmm. But you see, there are gray areas there. Mm -hmm. 
mm. that you have you must be able to say no mm. because the uh, the other doctor whom you probably have refused uh, uh, the first doctor whom you probably refused and now you go to uh, the second one well will think something bakit kinuha niya he, he, he was my patient mm -hmm. uh, probably it would have been good if the the first doctor referred it to another mm -hmm. although yeah the, the balance between the patient right and physician's right mm -hmm. that has to be well uh, tailored in such a way that you know conflicts will be avoided mm -hmm. professional conflicts would always be there and it is devastating on the profession yes and uh, it happens not only in the ultrasound or diagnostic center <coughs> no as in the hospital sometimes you know these things happen but right. uh, from the business side of view no point of view talagang dapat uh, yung doctor will not accept yes. because so that you gain more patients so will, more doctors will refer patients Tama. to your you're right you're right yes. and right. that should have been very professional on the part of the second doctor no uh -uh, okay yes. he mm -hmm. should not but you see, he would say, "Hey, gusto na ako ng pasyente. I don't yeah. like all Still, the <laughs> palusot lang yon, palusot lang." Uh, yeah. In the ultrasound room, uh -huh. in the ultrasound unit, I, I have made. We have made it a rule: never, never, never. Kahit humiga, I, I mean, maglupasay na yan, crying yes. tears uh, right. of blood. Uh -huh. you really do not give in to the temptation to get that patient yeah, for yourself. Yeah. And yes. they're not that common, that, you know, pero yeah. masisira yung reputation. Eh, yes. And in, yeah. in, it, in which case, hospital policies yes. must be articulated. Oh, yeah, must, be, policy. must be articulated. Yes. Because this is where you'll be able to avoid a lot of conflicts among professionals. Mm -hmm. uh, but if the, uh, the exchange between the patient and the doctor takes place outside of the uh, sonology room, would that be acceptable? Uh, <laughs> it's uh, very tricky, very ticklish. Yes. Very ticklish situation. And so it's not worth it sometimes. Mm -hmm. so doctors should not be tempted to do that. Yeah. Uh, but you see, there are also doctors who also well advocate this thing. Now. Well, if, if a patient leaves you, thank him. Mm -hmm. Thank oh, him. Yeah. No, there are Why? doctors who are what like that. You thank him. You thank, you thank the patient for having gone to another doctor. Uh, yeah. oh, we know makulit, different makulit, attitudes makulit, also makulit. among doctors because <laughs> these attitudes are not supposed to be subject of policies because mm -hmm. this this changes from time to time. Now you'll never know what's going to happen afterwards. No, mm -hmm. uh, but the attitudes of people, no, you cannot articulate them into mm -hmm. uh, policies. Mm -hmm. I see. <laughs> Diba sometimes when we do a difficult surgery, right. mm -hmm. sinasabi natin, ito dapat binigay ko ito sa aking enemy. This, are, this is the kind of <laughs> right, right, right. I should have given there are, to my There are people. <laughs> although, oh, although, although they don't say sometimes, the term. No, no, no. It happens. We, but see, we say it in, in, because, in jest. Oh, oh, in jest, oh, yes. yes. Kasi right. difficult case. Well, difficult uh, case. Difficult. Right. So, prone to so many yeah, things. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we'll have to take another uh, break in our discussions. Uh, don't leave this channel. We'll be right back again after a few words from our sponsors. Thank you. 